And here we go again, a little bit more Sam O'Nella Academy coming your way. Whew, bit of dust in my face. Right, the title for this one is Joshua Norton, the only United States Emperor. And as always, we've decided to do as little research behind this as possible. We're literally That's just true. going off the namesake title and hoping for the best, aren't we? We certainly Pretty are, much. yeah. I mean, we do know it's mostly presents there. So we they actually had a very early emperor before the presents. That's a good point. I didn't think about that. Yeah, we'll find out in a minute. Should we yeah. go for it? Let's take a look. Hey kids, let me ask you, do you watch the news often? Not Have you kids, attended a school in your life? <laughs> you ever look at a dollar? If the answer to any of these questions is yes, then chances are you're familiar with at least a couple United States presidents. But if you're like me prior to last week, You've probably never heard of a United States Emperor. Um, excuse me, no. good no, sir, I but I should inform you that we're actually living under an Emperor as we speak, at least according to my degree from the University of Reddit. Hey, that's no. great. Whoa, look over there. Huh. It's someone criticizing Elon Musk. <gasps> and he's making typos. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let me tell you all a story about a man named Joshua Norton. Norton was born in England at some oh. point in the 1810s. Very little is known about the guy's him. younger yes. years, other than the fact that he spent most of his youth in South Africa as part of the UK's colonization programs. He all came right. to San Francisco in 1849 with a modest amount of wealth to his name, and worked his way up in the real estate and commodities markets to become one of the city's wealthiest citizens. All was normal in the life of Mr. Norton, until one day when he got a little too big for his britches. You see, in 1852, China was facing a huge famine, so they completely banned the export of rice. Naturally, San Fran's rice price began to skyrocket in response to the reduced supply, peaking at 36 cents per pound. Norton saw this and decided to buy a $25,000 rice shipment from Peru at 12 cents per pound, thinking he'd corner the market. Keep in mind, that's around $750,000 in today's money. Little did he know, that wasn't the only shipment coming out of Peru, and by the time he was able to sell it, rice was already back down to three cents oh. a pound. Now, according to my calculations, mm. that put Norton at a net loss, a loss. of a whole frickin' lot. He <laughs> subsequently got into a years-long court battle with the vendor who sold him the shipment, which only huh. cost him more money, and ultimately left the man destitute. So, Norton did what anybody would do after losing everything. He drank a nice hefty dose of fuck it all and said, you know what? <laughs> the courts can eat my shorts, the house can eat my blouse, Peru can eat my shoe, I declare myself emperor of these United States, and I'm telling every newspaper in the city about it. And then he did. Now the papers could have just been. He called like, it. Well, said it boy just declared himself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But instead they said, you know what? This guy's kind of a meme. Let's publish his declaration just for gits and shiggles. People across the city had their laughs, and Norton's rise to power began. From here, he issued several more commands to the media, and unlike nowadays, people loved having regular Norton updates shoved in their <laughs> face. The Among prison? these announcements was a decree in 1859 to formally abolish the was. United States Congress. He also gave out a mandate to both the Protestant and Roman Catholic churches to formally ordain him as emperor. Although these edicts were ultimately ignored by the powers they were addressed to, they still served to build Norton's reputation around the city, and before long he was a fully-fledged local celebrity. He was <laughs> easily recognized by passerby, typically sporting a blue naval uniform and a beaver hat with a peacock feather in it. Pretty soon, Norton could expect to receive the royal treatment wherever he went. <laughs> People started to address That's him quietly on the streets, yeah. he got to ride public transport for free, and he even got occasional tax payments from people sympathetic to his impoverished living situation. Oh, and get this, Norton became so famous that toy stores in the city began selling <laughs> dolls of the man for kids to play with. How many people can you think of yeah. that were so legendary that they yeah, got dolls then. made after them? You got Emperor Norton, Mr. T, and the bear that Teddy Roosevelt decided not to shoot. That's it, really. Also, though not backed by actual law in any way, his declarations came to be taken relatively seriously by the populace around him. Hmm. For example, according to Norton, saying Frisco instead of San Francisco would be punishable by by a $25 fine. Talk to any Frisco native and you'll find that this attitude survives to this day. With the help All of right. a local printing firm, Norton even issued his own currency, which was actually accepted uh, by many residents of the city, no. despite having no backing behind it whatsoever. In fact, a few Norton bucks are still floating around today as highly valued collector's items. I tried doing the same thing a while back, but unfortunately, Onella <laughs> rubles are still only worth their really weight in Onella rubles. Uh -huh. Of course, it wasn't all magpies and molasses for our good friend Josh. He was once arrested 
arrested by a policeman named Armand Barbier, who wanted to throw him in an asylum for his apparent insanity. Needless to say, when the public caught wind of this, they lost their fucking minds. Yeah. Irate <laughs> citizens wrote complaints in droves. Mm. All the newspapers published scathing editorials towards the police department. Stray cats were thrown into wood chippers. I don't have any evidence for that last one. I'm just, you know, assuming based on what I would do in this scenario. Anyway, pretty soon, <laughs> would you really? the chief of police got the memo, and Emperor Norton was released unscathed. Thankfully, Norton issued a royal pardon towards the man who arrested him, and from that point onward, whenever Norton passed a member of the force, they would stop and salute him. So, although in many ways he appeared godlike, Norton was but a mortal. And, as mortals sometimes do, Emperor Norton decided to drop dead on a street corner on January 8th of 1880. However, yeah, he left behind a legacy the likes of which most of us could only dream of. Beyond just the comedic <laughs> value yeah. of his many exploits, Norton definitely had his prophetic moments, with some of his orders actually coming true decades after they were given. On multiple occasions, he ordered a bridge to be built between San Francisco and the Oakland Bay area, which was eventually ah. constructed in the 1930s. He also told people to form a League of Nations to uphold international interests. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a man yelling in California wasn't quite enough to convince the leaders of the world that such a thing was necessary. But who knows, maybe the little Nordo could have stopped World War I if he had been just a bit louder. I hope this tale has inspired some of you young impressionable kids out there. Not because I expect any of you to succeed in the same way Norton did, but just because it's my personal belief that the world could always use more oddball vagrants. Seven. Wait a minute. <laughs> oddball vagrants? Product placement. Sponsor time. Question. Do you do literally anything? If do you know what though? You see, you do see these little fine examples of, of stuff that's gone on over the years. And, and one that springs to mind for me right now, and many people probably slate me for it, but you know that girl, that young girl, she's all about like the um, the worldwide, how it's, it's we're, we're destructing the world ourselves. That girl, Gret, is it Greta yeah, Gret yeah, Thunberg? Yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Well, when, from what I know of her, a real Aussie, she was basically a nobody. She just started, her voice became louder due to the internet, no doubt, and yeah. other social media, etc. And then people started that. backing her mm -hmm. and joining her, like, her push to help out, mm. you know, mankind and, yeah. and the earth. And then look where she is now. She's like really famous. She's only like 16, yeah. 17. Yeah. That's all he was doing back then, just mm. without the internet. He started saying, do you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna be a somebody. I'm going to make a name for myself. I'm going to put it in the papers and people are going to start talking about it. And then uh, word's going to build it's itself. It's going to get so powerful that people actually listen, yeah. He kind of made it out that way. He could have put, just had such a, a fantastic persona that he obviously was very good at what he did to to become rich and then make a business okay lost it yeah, unfortunately on one bad <laughs> deal but he obviously had the persona of being positive on that didn't he uh let's know though what you thought of joshua that is joshua norton ain't it? yeah joshua yeah. norton samu Nella. um Maybe you've got something else you can whack down below, some insight, yeah, let us know. Uh, and if you're still here, thanks for joining us. See you all soon. Catch you on the flip side. <laughs>